GST. When you hear the phone number, please keep in mind that this pre-recorded show, so please don't call. And thanks for listening to News Radio WGST. The people you've always trusted are where they've always been. 105.7 FM at 6:40 AM WGST. Twenty minutes after the hour, the Tom like his show. We're one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Our guest, a radio talk show host, C. Miles Smith. And we're talking about that Brinks truck that overturned in Miami, and five hundred and fifty thousand dollars came pouring out, and people just started, you know, picking up loot. Yeah. Let's go to your calls here. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Pam, you're on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Pam. How's it going? Do you care? Yes, I do. Doing great. Oh, that's great. But why do you have that person on the air? <laughs> you are totally crazy. Get that real. money is stolen. They know that that money belongs to the federal government. And for them to come down and steal that money, I think that's wrong. I think they should have turned it in. And another thing. My, I'm black also, and my mother raised three of us divorced. She never once went on welfare. My mother worked two jobs, plus went to Pepperdine University. So you know what? They, they're in that position because they want to be in that position. You can't help anyone if they do not want to help themselves. Pam, it's so unfortunate that you have that opinion. You're talking about who's right and who's wrong. You're if we, wrong. If You're we gonna, wrong. No, well, we're going to talk about the whole story. We're talking about a nation that flim flams some Indians out some land with some beads. We're talking about Japanese who get reparated. We're talking about Swiss bank accounts who get claimed by the victims of the Holocaust, yet black folk can't claim some chump change on the highway in California. You've got, to, you've got to get your mind right. Woman. Well, first of all, I'm not your woman. Second of all, I need you to, I might need you to translate because you speak Ebonic so well. Right, well, okay. I, I, you, now, you, you, you have oh, lost you touch with your Compton. people, too, sister. I live in Compton, California, and I'm sure Tom knows exactly where that is. We I live do. in Compton, okay? So you can't tell me that. You're, you're talking to the wrong, you're talking to somebody who saw their mother, worked two jobs, did not get on welfare, did not do drugs. And got a four-year de degree and worked for Rockwell, Rockwell International. She's Sister. talking to the wrong colored person. Sister, your, all, your, your second resume. Of all, second of all, yeah, go ahead. are wrong. Now, some of those black people, maybe some things can be circumstanced. But some of them, they can claim whatever they want to. This is still a free country. I'm not saying that there isn't any prejudice, but there, there is some. But there's no reason for, to say that the white man kept me down. No white man's keeping you down. Only thing keeping down the black man is the black man themselves. Sister, you you terribly no, no, misguided. Sister, first of all, I, I know. Of now I know. You all right? Because you cleared that up. You're not my woman. You're not my sister. Okay. You're a perpetrator. But you I'm perpetrating Christian. black. Number I'm one, you don't realize. You know what? As a Christian, as a Christian. Oh, now we're getting your religious. Go heaven, you're not gonna go to heaven and say, well, oh, we're gonna have the black nation over here in heaven, and then the white um over here. There's no Pam. in heaven. Pam. Right, so how can you say that? Pam, you are spewing a lot of pent up venom. No, you're missing the whole the point. You're missing the whole Let me make one. Blaming another race. Let me make one. There are. And let you, me. You're yourself. You talk on the radio. Why haven't you bettered yourself? Let me, let me explain I something to you. I bettered your education. I bettered your verbal skills. You My skills are excellent. You My skills, well, let me tell you not. something. You're talking, you say folks. That's and right. Folks. I'm folks. from Atlanta, Georgia, and it my show is matter. called The Talk it's, How You Like Underground Posse. We I talk how we like, mother. sister. My you are so impressed by the Caucasian it, culture. It, it, You've it, assimilated it, so correctly, it, and you're so proud, matter. and you're demonstrating your skills so effectively tonight. We need to move on to a more intelligent caller, man. You know what? You know what? You're just making excuses. I have a stepmother from Jackson, Mississippi. All right, let me give you my resume. Let me give you my resume. I'm just. I'm speaking right now. I have a stepmother from Jackson, Mississippi. I don't you give a what? fuck about your stepmama, girl. Perfect, perfect, I don't care nothing about your stepmama. Get real. And it's not mama, okay? You get know, real, you know, woman. Get gone. You know, you are. That's why you're, you're just a dark town person to me. Okay, because thank you, you know Pam. What? I know a lot of people can do better. I'll be that, Pam. Let right, me explain Pam. something, man. 
First of all, as America politely dines from its collective tables, black folks are, are scrambling for the crumbs. And that's all that failed. As America is dining on fine silver with crystal, as we prepare for the inaugural ball here in the District of Columbia, black folks are catching crumbs off the table with their fingers. That money on the highway in Miami, Florida, wasn't nothing but some crumbs, man. Thank you, Pam, for the call. Michelle, you're on the Tom Likas show with our guest, C. Miles Smith. Hello. C. Miles. Hey. I'm blown away. I'm sorry. I am. I feel really bad for you. For me? Yeah. I'm living large, girlfriend. Well, maybe you're living large on the radio and all, and you seem to have a really good grasp on the people that you speak for. However, mm -hmm. that man was hurt. The man was hurt. He was left there. The bring star... The driver? Yes. Money was taken. Yes. And I'm sorry, I know I'm going to be heading into an area on my cellular that it's going to cut off soon, but I just wanted to say that. And you know what? When I first heard the story, I was like, yeah, pennies from heaven, and I bet you those people could use the money. That was my first thought. Second thought, heard about the guards, felt really bad. Third thought, then I heard about the mother and the child, and I felt ashamed. I felt ashamed. But you know what makes me feel ashamed, young lady? And I'm going to be honest with you. This, this, this guard was hurt. A couple of guards were hurt, and that's very unfortunate. The, the lives of the people are ruined in that community. I've, Folks I've, are getting I've gunned down there. by police officers, and all of these people who want to come up with some morality lesson on this reward issue, where were they when these people's lives were in decay? And don't tell me it's by choice that they're poor. Nobody chooses to be I, poor in America. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that, and, and um, I'm not going to attempt to speak for anybody right, else right, but myself. Right. But, but however, um, I don't think two wrongs make a right, and, and and maybe I'm naive, but I really do believe that. And my, and as I said, my first thought was, yeah, um, hey, this is great. Welfare. I mean, I, my mom was on welfare. <laughs> What's your name again? My name is Michelle. Michelle, you you intelligent young lady. You I recall you recall the the uh, history of America back during the West. When folks got in Conestoga wagons and set fire to the horse's butt, and as far as they rode, they could claim all the land they wanted. Then nobody step up and say, "Hey, give these Indians their land back." These I know, folks but built you know dynasties that money on that. That's yours and mine. That money isn't just the government. It's yours and mine. But it's not a you yours and mine. Yes, it's a. It's, it's not. It's not. It's an us versus them scenario in the ghetto. Unfortunately. Well, I, I wish that there was a way that we can, and I'm not just saying this, I really mean this, I wish there was some way that we could build a bridge so it's not the us versus them. Because you know what? There mm -hmm. are people who are sincere and who want to make a difference on Michelle, both sides. Michelle, they're building jails as we speak right now for the little boys that are living in Overton. They would rather spend, and I'm talking about the government, us versus them, they would rather spend big money on warehousing adults than they would on the front end and educating young people. And so these are the these are the kinds of contrasts and, and silly scenarios we see in America. And I don't see America demonstrating any class and dignity and perfect decorum in other situations. When something goes down with Saddam Hussein, they freeze in bank accounts, freezing up Libya's money. You know, America's grab as grab can. But when the same thing happens to her, all of a sudden she's so highfalutin and moral. I don't think it's real. Thank you for the call, Michelle. Here comes Patrick. Patrick, you're on the Tom Likas Show with our guest, C. Miles Smith. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Patrick. And I don't care. I didn't think so. <laughs> well, anyway, I think it's unfortunate this turned into a race issue because uh, there's more poor white people than blacks. I mean, but this story is about poor black people. This is a race story from the beginning. The poor dumb Negroes grabbing the white man's money. That's the way the media wanted to portray it. But they skillfully mask it. But I'm taking the covers off tonight. It's black folks snatching up Mr. Bobo's money. That's all it is. And Mr. Bobo want his money back. He going to use cameras. He going to use dogs. And he going to use some colored snitches to get his money back. And, he's, and he wants his food stamps, too. Yeah, you're right, and I think it's wrong. I mean, we need to really treat people with respect and dignity, and we don't do that. And when this happens, hey, I mean, should anybody be surprised? That's my point exactly, young man. Go for it, T-Mile. All right. I look at the Incas, uh, Tom, the Aztecs, the Ararats, the Algonquins, the Iroquois, the Sioux, the Cherokee, the Mohawk, and even my people who were allegedly flim-flammed out of 40 acres and a mule. 
I wonder how much it would cost nowadays to get a mule. <laughs> yeah, well, you can buy a few with that Brinks money, I'll tell you that. Oh, I'm telling you. There you go. C. Miles Smith is our guest. He's a radio talk show based in Baltimore and Washington, D.C., and uh, he's joining us uh, to talk about that Brinks truck that overturned in Miami, uh, spilling about $550,000 onto the streets below the highway. And people went up and started scooping up cash, and, uh, well, you heard about the uh, amnesty they offered for two days, and only two people showed up. And now they're using cameras and videotapes to try to find out who's got that money. Stay. The Tom Likas Show. Twice the radio of any other Atlanta station. 105.7 FM and 640 AM WGST. For traffic. Taking a look at Northside Drive in Marietta. That's the site of one accident in downtown Atlanta. Keith Callen's got time saver helicopter. Time saver helicopter traffic and weather together on the box. We've been arrested for driving illegally in the express lane. You can depend on us. There'll be some congestion, obviously, but uh, don't look for the guard. Again, that you're going to hear from some small traffic experts. Traffic. traffic. When it matters to you. This is talk radio with attitude. Get used to it, folks. It's the Tom Likas Show. 26 minutes before the hour from Seattle, it's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Here we are at 1 800 5 800 Tom. We appreciate you being with us. We are joined uh, by C. Miles Smith. Uh, he is a radio talk show host who has been uh, recently on the air. A listener tipped us off to this. Yeah. He has been on the air recently uh, talking about that Brinks truck uh, that uh, overturned in Miami's Overtown District. And uh, about uh, half a million dollars came pouring out of that truck. And suddenly, uh, uh, now everybody is debating whether people should have been picking up that money. And our guest said, hey, more power to him. More power to the people who took that money. And, uh, C. Miles Smith, would you have been taking money if you were down there and happened to be near that overpass in Miami? I'd have been looking like Batman and Robin. I'd have been gobbling up dirt and money and everything else I could have found. I'd have kidnapped somebody that got more money than me. Let me tell you something, man. America gets real two-faced when it comes to certain things. Like Miss Liberty. You got Miss Liberty standing up there holding the torch. But when brown folks come in on boats or when folks try to creep across the border, they want to cut the light out. But yet they toast champagne to mafia immigrants from Europe, gangsters and criminals. They welcome them here to America, or if a crop fails in Ireland somewhere, anything that comes out of Ireland, they can automatically get a job and get set up. Right now, in the black community, we're suffering. We're hemorrhaging. And part of that hemorrhaging is due to the blood suckers in our community. When I say blood suckers, I'm talking about those people from a foreign land who have studied our consuming habits, who set up these economic black holes that suck up our money. If they want to get most of that money back, I suggest they go to the Korean merchants out there in Miami. How many Korean merchants are in Miami? I, I lived in Miami. I don't remember that. Partner, you can go throughout the black community in Atlanta. We brought, I broadcast here, by the way, on the WOL News Talk Network. We simulcast in the District of Columbia, the nation's capital, WOL 1450, and here in Baltimore, 1010. Work for Sister Dr. Kathy Hughes. She owns about, this a black woman, a strong black woman, owns about 10 radio stations. We had an issue here, and Korean stores are everywhere. We had an issue here where they had a grand opening sign up in front of a store that had been open for six months. Somebody they bought some frozen meat with almost a year's expiration date on it. We shut the store down. We shut the store down. And then people said that we were fanning the flames of racism because we stopped the pirates from selling poison meat in the community. Folks are uh, nipping at our heels like they do on the Wild Kingdom when the antelope go across the prairie. You got bloodsuckers, coyotes, hyena, wolves slipping at our heels. And all of a sudden, we graze on a little grass. Everybody wants us to regurgitate. I say, no way. Why, are you trying to say that all the problems in the black community are the caused, uh, are caused by Koreans and Caucasians and everybody else but black folks? Tom, I wouldn't be that ignorant. But you have to understand that if you have a, a female, just like to put it in a, in a woman's perspective, if you've got a woman who has been raped, she's in a, trauma, a traumatic situation. She's in trauma. She's going to have to have some counseling. She's going to have to get dealt with so that she can overcome her emotional distress. Ain't no telling where she might go, how her mind might turn out. We sent a monkey up to space. He comes back. He gets deprogrammed. We sent a veteran over there to uh, fight in Desert Storm. He comes back. He gets deprogrammed. But you take a whole race of people, 400 years enslaved. They don't get no programming, no nothing. They just set out 
out here to fend for themselves and say, well, pull yourselves up by your own bootstraps. And you got suckers like New Gingrich recalling bootstraps. We got to get real in America. We got to start facing the reality. When things like this Brinks truck happens, this is only the tip of the iceberg. It's going to be get, get, get as much as you can. I'm telling you, man, it's getting ready to be rough when they start with this wealth re welfare reform. You mark my words, man. Not because I wanted to or because you wanted to, but you can't have those kind of conditions in a community of people and expect them to survive, man. It's damn near war in the black community. And especially in Overton, you're familiar with the riots and the police brutality. I was the there when it happened. I lived in Miami. So, 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 now, were you surprised that they got the money? Was I surprised that people took the money? Yeah. No, of course I'm not surprised that people took the money. As a matter of fact, I don't care what pea color people are. Uh -huh. I think most people would take the money. That's right. So you want them to give it back, though? I, well, put it this way. All uh -huh. I know is that y y the bank is not going to pay and the government is not going to pay. Eventually, it's going to be taken up by the insurance companies, and the insurance company is going to pass it on to us in the form of higher costs for car insurance, bounce checks at the bank, and stuff like that. So eventually, we're all going to pay for it, including you. No, sir. And I'm going to tell you why. See, that's the flim-flam. That's how they, they flim-flam and trick people. In the black community, we're redlined, talking about insurance rates. you got to pay some out for your house. This some out because you people are in a community of criminals. The media skillfully manipulates statistics to say that your rates are going to have to be higher because we're having more break-ins here. But yet, in Mr. Bobo's land, in La La Land, in White World, when they get ripped off and they scam on the insurance company, they get claims in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. When they come in my house, all they're going to get is a TV, a VCR, and some pictures of my girlfriends and things, man. But when they go to Mr. Bobo's wife, they're getting fur coats, laptops, and they're they going to fatten up the claim. So that's where the high cost of insurance comes from. Not in the ghetto, where the so-called high crime is, but out there in, in La La Land with Mr. Bobo. 1-800-5800-TOM, our guest, C. Miles Smith. Terry, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Terry. Yes. Talk to me now. Tom? Huh? Terry, you got the radio turned up. Okay. And now you're finding out why we tell you to turn it down. Oh, can I turn it down? I've been waiting for so long. Here we are. It's you're only on hold nine minutes. I see it on the screen here. Okay. Is Steve Miles still there? He yes. is. Yes, ma'am. He needs to be blown up in the biggest way. Blown up? You, you know, you're entertaining, but... Uh, you have a, you advocating my death? Irritating and annoying, and the fact of the matter is that there's right and there's wrong. And you keep bringing in every other issue under the sun, but we're specifically speaking about taking money that's not yours. There's right and there's wrong. There's no two ways about it. There's no two ways about it. This land belongs to the American Indians, yet they have been reduced Here we go to with mascots. The Indians. I, you don't want to go there. You don't, don't want to go with. there. See, when you go to court, the judge says you got to tell the truth, the whole we're not truth. Going to court. And we're no, we are holding. We're we, stealing money. Look here, boo. Really? Boo, we hold a court on the radio tonight. Advocate taking that money, you can advocate people just going crazy and breaking whatever law they want to break and taking money and whatever else they want to take. No, ma'am, I'm not, and I never do that. No, ma'am. It's just the same. And no, it's not the it's same. It's the same. This was a freak There's accident. It's not theirs. Regardless of how the money got on the freeway. Mm-hmm. So you what's not theirs. You're going they to know that it's wrong. And there's no question about it. You're going to limit this discussion to just the taking of money. We're not going to look right. at the big picture. That's what this is. And that's why America suffers so much, young lady, because we're so tunnel vision. You, you see, uh, each issue separately and find the best way to solve it. But these issues are not separate. They are all linked. Let me give you an example. You, I cannot believe that this Brinks truck rolling over, mm -hmm. the, the driver being injured, and these coins mm -hmm. falling on the freeway... Mm -hmm. Is all linked. It is. And, I'm going uh, to tell you how it's linked. Forth. I'm going to tell you how it's linked. Had this truck overturned in a classy neighborhood in Seattle or a nice neighborhood in Washington, D.C., or somewhere down by Bill Clinton's house on Pennsylvania Avenue, the money would have been gently swept up, the news cameras would have videotaped it, and the truck would have been towed away. No I problem. Don't that. But I don't this money. That. I think it still would have been um, big news. Yeah, it would have been big news, but it would have been a mad scramble for it because the people who saw the accident would have not been economically depressed or economically deprived. These people saw an opportunity to get paid. So they are. Right. And so they saw an opportunity to get paid, and that's what they did. It's still wrong. Well, I'm going to tell you what's wrong. 
it's wrong to overlook the whole picture, to focus on something real narrow that limits your thinking. It's like a mule. We plow mules down here in the south. We put blinders on that mule so that he'll only look straight ahead. And we get good straight rolls out that mule. That mule will work all day long, work you to death. But once you take those blinders off that mule, he'll look all around and plow everywhere. You got to take your blinders off of the social conditions here in America and look at all of the conditions to see how they're interlaced, how they work together, young lady. Thank you for the call, Terry. 1-800-5800-TOM. More of our uh, guest, C. Miles Smith, radio talk show host from Baltimore and Washington, D.C., coming up. Right now, 17 minutes before the hour, and my name is Tom Likas. Live on Fox. What they would call 